Welcome into this message. I'm going to be speaking prophetically to you here, and I'm not necessarily going to be speaking prophetically to you about you, but I'm going to be speaking prophetically to you about people who have spoken things over you that the Lord has not said it's so for your life. People who have allowed themselves to be used as mouthpieces for the enemy to speak into your life when the Lord has said something otherwise, when the Lord is doing something contrary. And it's not necessarily a warning to these people. It's more so a message to you for when you begin to see these things happen and these people's lives, that you know that it is God. You know that it is the Lord issuing judgment. And I don't necessarily like to release prophetic words like this because it's not something that is necessarily encouraging. It's something that's more so just a... Um, look out for this and more so to, to tell you how to react in this moment and that you know the signs that God is moving in your life. You know the signs that God is with you and you know that God is not forsaking you because a lot of times, you know, you can receive a prophetic word and it's encouraging and it's wonderful and it helps you move forward. But you still kind of question, is God, has he for, forsaken you in this certain area? Or has how, how is God dealing with this situation over here that's affecting you negatively? But you have the encouragement to continue moving forward. But how is God going to deal with this thing, this tiny thing in the corner that is really beginning to uh, take jabs at you and, and affect you in a negative way? There are often times where the Lord will release prophetic words that aren't so pretty. It's not um, necessarily a wonderful thing to release, but it's more so just God saying, I see you. I hear what you're going through. I know what you've come to me about in this secret place. I know the things that you've cried to me about. And I also see the things and I hear the things that people are saying about you when you're not around. I see the things and I hear the things that people are um uh, spewing when it comes to you when you're not around but the word of God says touch not my anointed what he means by that is when the Lord places an anointing on you for a certain season or to do a certain thing and people, people begin to come up against that directly that is an attack from the enemy that is a fiery dart being thrown by the enemy and the Lord is the, the Lord is the one that will come in he says when the enemy comes in like a flood, he'll hold up a standard. So the Lord is the one that will come in when the enemy comes in like a flood. He'll step in and put up a standard against him. And that standard is oftentimes a prophetic word that isn't so encouraging, but it's more so God saying, this is my standard, my standard that I'm putting here and they will not go over it. And we see countless of times, I'm going to read to you where David will pray prayers and these prayers are really just outlining God's standard to us. And he will pray the prayers of a righteous uh, man of God. And these prayers would be more so saying, hey, I see that you're doing this, but this is the Lord saying that he sees all things. There is nothing that goes on under the awareness of God that he's not aware of. So there are people in your life that you are not aware of that, or maybe you are aware of. Let me change that. Maybe some of these people you are aware of, or some of these people you are not aware of. But what you are definitely not aware of, if you do know the people or, not, or don't know the people, is the things that they are saying about you behind closed doors when you're not in the room. What you're definitely not aware of is the blatant lies that the devil is speaking through their mouth as they're allowing to be themselves to be used as a vessel. But the Lord is saying that there's coming a time, and for a lot of you, you're in that time right now where people can no longer just blab out things from the enemy and it'd be okay. People can no longer speak ill will over your life. And it'd be okay because God is saying that he's taking you somewhere and you were anointed to be in that place, to be in that season, to do that thing, whatever it is. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. What does that mean? That means that anything that the enemy puts his mouth on, he has to eat his own words. The enemy has to eat his own words. And that goes for people who are allowing themselves to be used as um devil bait to be allowed to uh, that are allowing themselves to be used as a mouthpiece for the enemy that goes for them as well they're they're going to eat their own words this is a season right now and a lot of you are entering into a season where the things that people say about you they're going to have to recount their words they're going to eat their own words 
And I want to take you to Psalms ch uh, chapter 109. I'm going to read to you almost the whole chapter, and I want you to stick with me here. And the reason I'm going to read this to you is because when you begin to see these things, when you begin to hear these things that people are saying about you, there's no need to try to prove yourself. There's no need to try to prove them wrong. There's no need to try to um, uh, paint a paint a picture of, of something. There's no need to do any of that because they will recount their own words because the word of God that has been spoken over your life shall not come back void. And any any body that has been used by the enemy to form weapons, first of all, they shall not proper, uh, prosper. And secondly, they are going to have to eat their own words. They're going to have to stand before God on judgment day. And a lot of these people, before they even get to a judgment day, they're going to have to go before the Lord and repent. And if they don't repent, here's what's coming to them. This is this is the word of God. I'm going to read to you Psalm chapter 109, where this is David. He says, God of my praise, don't keep quiet because their mouths of, the mouths of wicked liars have opened up against me. That is all it is, by the way. That is all it is. It's just blatant lies and it's wickedness. And what do we know about lies? People who tell lies are doing the work of their father, the devil, because he is the father of lies. And he says, God of my praise, don't keep quiet because the mouths of wicked liars, that is what they are, have opened up against me, talking about me with lying tongues. Hateful words surround me. They attack me for no reason. That's the key phrase, no reason. There's no um, valid reason. It is something that is happening in the realm of the spirit. There's no uh, valid reason why other than the fact that you're anointed and the enemy doesn't want to see the work of God be uh, made manifest in your life. And it says, their hateful words surround me. They attack me for no reason. Instead of returning my love, they accuse me. And here's the thing, and this is why I love the prayers of David, because he, he, he leaves no stone unturned. He hits every single corner. He's saying, instead of returning my love to these people, I'm telling you, you will know that it's them because you have given these people nothing but love, but they have given you nothing but um, lies in return and saying things behind your back that are not necessarily true. And these are things that a lot of times only the Lord knows, only the Lord knows. And it says, hateful words surround me. They attack me for no reason. Instead of returning my love, they accuse me, but I am at prayer. They repay me evil for good, hatred in, re hatred in return for my love, appoint a wicked person to be against this person, they say, an accuser to stand right next to him. When the sentence is passed, let him be found guilty. Let his prayer be found sinful. Let his days be few. Let someone else assume his position. This is what will happen to people who set their mouths against the children of God and more importantly, against a thing that God is doing in his children's lives. And he says, when the sentence is passed, let him be found guilty. Let his prayer be found sinful because, and I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to put a thumbtack in that there, but, or a pin in that there. He says, let his prayer be found simple. Why is he saying that? Because a lot of times when people are setting their mouths against the children of God or a thing that God is doing in his children's lives, their prayers are in vain. Their prayers are in vain. They don't mean anything. They're, in, they're praying in vain, which means that they're praying a curse. Any prayer that is a lie, any prayer that is in vain, it is a sinful prayer. It is a curse. It says, let this, let his prayer be found sinful. Let his days be few. Let someone else assume his position. Let his children become orphans. Let his wife turn into a, a widow. Let his children wander aimlessly begging, driven out of their ruined homes. And this is something that I wouldn't want to see happen to anyone. And this is something I'm sure you wouldn't want to see happen to anyone. But when the Lord says that he's had enough, he's had enough. And he says, let no one extend faithful love to him. Let no one have mercy on his orphans. Let his descendants be eliminated. Let their names be wiped out in just one generation. Let his father's wrongdoing be remembered before the Lord. Let his mother's sin never be wiped out. Let them be before the Lord always and let God eliminate the very memory of them from the land. All because this person, hear this, all because this person didn't remember to demonstrate faithful love, but chased after the poor and needy, even the brokenhearted, with deadly intent. 
how sad is that? Since, the, since he loved to curse, let it come back on him. There it is. When these people pray prayers, when these people are speaking out against you, the, their prayers are in vain. It's definitely in vain. It's a curse. And it says, let it come back on him since he didn't care much for the blessing. Let it be far away from him. Since he wore curses like a coat, let them sleep inside him like water, seep into his bones like oil. So instead of wearing the anointing oil of the Holy, Holy Spirit, they're wearing the oil of a curse because they're speaking it out over their life, over not their life, but your life. And so those things, the very things that they're speaking out over your life, whether they know it or not, they're going to have to eat it. The word of God says, David will pray the prayers. He said, let them be like the clothes he wears, like a belt that is always around him. Let the, uh, let the curses that he spoke seep into his bones like oil. But let all that be the reward my accusers get from the Lord, the reward for those who speak evil against me. This is what, this is the kind of God we serve. And I know that this is not um, a prophetic word of, of encouragement um, or edification, as people will say, but it's definitely something that I wanted, I wanted to share with you that the Lord placed heavy on me, heavy on me for those who have been speaking against you. And no one wants, I'm telling you, no one wants to see people who have been speaking ill against them um, go through certain things. Not even God wants to see that. But God is a God of justice. He is a God of justice and he protects his own. He protects his children. He protects his anointed. He says, touch not my anointed. He protects what he's doing through his anointed. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God won't let you mess. If God won't let you mess up what he's doing in your life, he's definitely not going to let someone else mess up what he's doing in your life. That is a word. <laughs> so this is definitely coming. We're definitely coming to a Psalms 109 moment for a lot of you where um, the Lord is, you're getting ready to see people fall out of your life and you're getting ready to see the judgment of God on those people who fell out of your life because God has removed them from your life, because they have done nothing but be used as a mouthpiece by the enemy. But when God gets ready to take you somewhere, these are the very people that need to be removed. They need to exit stage left. And so the Lord is saying, it's coming a Psalms 109 moment where the Lord is getting ready to issue judgment to these people because there's you, when you reach a certain point in God, when he gets ready to take you to a certain level, when he anoints you for a certain thing, he has to protect it. I talked about it a couple messages back, how the Lord will place a hedge around you. And that hedge includes removing people who speak things over your life because they're being used by the enemy. They're being used as a mouthpiece by the enemy. And the Lord says, it will happen no more. It will happen no more. So I love you all. And I really, I really don't like releasing uh, messages like this because um, it can come off a little harsh. But it is something that the Lord placed heavy on my heart to share with you all. And I want you to read over that. I want you to read over Psalms chapter 109. And I want you to, as you're reading over it, take into consideration that this is something that you don't have to... You know, when it comes to these people who speak things over you, it's not something that you have to try to prove yourself to. It's not something that you have to um, worry about because a lot of times people will worry about these things. Um, it'll keep them up at night. It will, um, you know, put them in a place of having to constantly defend themselves. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to be on the defense all the time because if you're on the defense trying to defend yourself against the enemy, you're out of alignment with God because you're not trusting that God will go before you to fight your battles. You're trying to defend yourself. It's giving the enemy more power than he has. He wants to keep you on the defense. But God is saying that he's already gone before you and he's fought the battle for you. All you have to do is leave it in the, leave it in the Lord's hand. Because if he's anointed you for something, if he's anointed you for a certain season, for a certain thing, if he's, a, if he's anointed you as his child of God, as his child, as a child of God, then he's going to make sure that the gates of hell do not prevail against anything that he's put his hand on in your life. Anything. So I love you all. There's so many resources for you below. I finally created the playlist for Kingdom Economy. 
for those of you who are wanting to learn more about how to be plugged into Kingdom, Kingdom Economy. If you're someone who's struggling with debt, um, I'm talking about large lump sums of debt. The Lord has breaking, broken that off of my life um, in wonderful, divine, supernatural ways through um, his, through by me standing on his word, through uh, the, uh, my brain just went blank, through um, tithing and through sowing, the principle of sowing and reaping, reaping and seed time and harvest time. There came a time in my life where I took that very seriously. I didn't know much about it, but then I began to learn about it and I took it very seriously. And just by me taking action through faith and sowing and consistently sowing to be debt free and sowing for other things in my life, the Lord has moved in very supernatural ways. And I could go more in depth on that now, but I have an entire playlist for you. And I just want to tell you about that so that you can go watch all of those messages and receive the same blessings that the Lord had placed on my on my life just by standing on his word and standing on uh, biblical principles that are there for all of us, all of us. Um, the Lord doesn't desire for any of us to be in bondage. And so that includes financial bondage as well. And if you are someone who the Lord has placed on your heart to plant a seed in fertile ground, this is the perfect place to do it. There is a link below for you to do that. I pray over every single seed. There, there's been countless of testimonies about how the Lord is breaking um, bondage, financial bondage off of people's lives who are plugged into this ministry. I do believe that the Lord has placed a strong anointing on this ministry for supernatural um, help, right? Um, divine relationships and... Um, uh, supernatural finances in the name of Jesus. So I pray that over you every single day. I also ask that you share this message and check out some of the other resources that are there for you below. I work tirelessly, um, I believe I'm using the right word, um, every day to allow myself to be used as a vessel by God to pour into your life. So I ask that you check out those resources below and subscribe to this uh, ministry channel and hit the notification bell that's for you so that you're not missing out on these messages as I continue to upload them and the Lord continues to speak through me um, as a vessel. And I will talk with you in the next message. I love you all and I'm always praying for you.